Hey, I'm Darlene and you're watching a rapid fire art tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you my method to draw more than six unique eyes from scratch so you can draw realistic eye shapes from thin air without the need for any reference images. I'm going to use a Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 with a Pro Pen 2 stylus and a ruler because why not? I'm also using Photoshop. This is my very first tutorial on the Cintiq Pro. I'm also super noob to digital drawing and Photoshop, basically learning as I go. So my approach is very similar to how I do traditional work, in case you're wondering. Okay, let's get started. Let's add a new layer by hitting this button and naming it Construction. This is where we'll draw all of our construction lines. and create another layer called Eyes. I'm pulling the on-screen keyboard using the shortcuts on the tablet. This layer is where all of our sketches will go. Select the construction layer by clicking on it and select the ellipse tool to create a series of six circles. I'm holding the shift key and dragging to make a perfect circle. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste this circle five times. You don't have to do this part, but I'm just labeling all of the different eye types to easily keep track of everything. Okay, select the construction layer again. I'm gonna switch to the brush tool and select a brush called Pixel Stains, which you can download in the description below. It's a Photoshop brush that mimics the textured look of pencil and paper. I have these two settings switched on, pressure for opacity and pressure for size. This allows me to use a stylus similarly to a graphite pencil. The amount of pressure that I apply can not only control the lightness and darkness of a stroke, but also the level of thickness. This will come in handy for drawing subtle wrinkles and such. The next step is to draw a straight line through each and every circle. This line will dictate the angle of each eye. I'm just drawing a horizontal line through the first one. And I know it's weird that I'm using a ruler on a display tablet, but that's kind of what I prefer at the moment. For the upturned eye, I'm going to turn my ruler up on the right side and bring it down on the left. Let's do the exact opposite for the downturned eye. I like to keep my angle under about 10 degrees. You can tilt yours less or more depending on your preference. For the rest of them, I'm just gonna draw a straight horizontal line like the one I drew through the first. Instead of using a ruler, you can also use the line tool or just freehand it. Once you're done with that, select the layer called Eyes. Okay, finally, let's draw the first eye. I don't know why they're called Almond when they look more like footballs. I guess the name sounds prettier that way. Anyway, we're gonna draw the inner corner of the eye. I'm drawing it outside of the circle and creating a deep U shape. You can draw other shapes as well, which I'll demonstrate as we draw the next five eyes. The next step is to draw the upper eyelid. It'll go up, across, and then down, ending at the intersection where the circle and straight line meet. Just extend your stroke naturally, go up gradually, reach to the right, and then angle your strokes down in a gradual slope towards the intersection. Let's aim for a football-y shape, which is widest at the middle and tapers off at the ends. The top eyelid almost always has a deeper curve than the bottom one. See all the space in between the top eyelid and the straight line? For the bottom lid, we want to lessen the gap, 
while still maintaining a somewhat football-y shape, widest at the middle and narrowest at the ends. Let me just erase the arrow using the eraser end of my stylus. Now we can draw the eyelid crease, which sits above the top eyelid and kind of follows its shape. We can draw the crease by following the general shape of the top eyelid. Let's end it above the straight line. Now, the tail of your crease can go in any direction. Okay, let's get rid of some distractions, turning the construction layer off by pressing the eye. Where the inner corner of our eye widens out, we're gonna draw a boundary line or lines using very light strokes. The next step is to draw the iris. For sizing, I think a good rule of thumb is to draw the iris about two quarters the length of the eye, from the boundary line we just drew to the outer corner. So if you split the space into four equal sections, two quarters means two sections out of four. That's how wide the iris will be, roughly. I'm drawing two ticks on the eyeball to mark the iris's width or diameter, and then draw a full circle even if it goes outside of the eye's boundary. This will ensure that the iris is indeed a circle, not an oval or a lazily drawn pair of bracket shapes. Of course, you can always use the ellipse tool to create a perfect circle. Here's an example of what not to do. Drawing brackets could make the iris look very unrealistic. So even if we're drawing an eye that is very narrow, almost closed, it's a good idea to draw a full circle anyways. Once you know how big to draw the iris, you can draw it anywhere you want. The current center position makes the eye look as though it's staring straight at us. If you usually find it difficult to draw eyes that look straight on or straight ahead, the ruler may be very helpful for that purpose. Let's erase all the unnecessary lines and such. And there we have our almond or football shaped eye, ready to move on to the next one. Go to your layers and turn the construction layer on. Make sure the layer called eyes is still selected before you start sketching. The unique thing about this eye is that the outer corner is raised. It's higher on the right than it is on the left. And just like the first eye, we're going to start by drawing the inner corner. This time, instead of drawing a U shape, let's change it up with a V shape. Again, it sits outside the circle with the straight line going through it. You can draw any eye shape you want, just make sure that the outer corner ends at the intersection where the circle and straight line meet. I'm extending this line up naturally, across, and then down towards the intersection. At the bottom, draw a shallow curve and try to avoid drawing a straight line. If you want to make it even more shapely, you can deepen the curve like so. Onto the crease. You can draw it closer or further away from the eye, and it doesn't have to follow the exact shape of the eyelid either. I'm ending the crease above the straight line, 
and I'm splitting the tail in two at the very end. If you want to age the eye, you can add additional wrinkles that are longer. Sometimes, this area might have extra folds that are more subtle. I think it mostly comes with age, as the skin starts thinning out. You'll want to use light, thin strokes for this. Let's turn the construction layer off to remove distraction. If you're drawing this with pencil and paper, the circle and straight line can be completely erased now. We're going to draw the boundary line between the inner corner of the eye and the eyeball. And then comes the iris. If you want to more accurately measure two quarters of the eye, just use a ruler to measure the space and divide that number by four. So this is roughly 12.5 centimeters. Divide that by four and we get roughly three centimeters. So just draw a tick every three centimeters along the ruler you just drew. You don't need to draw this ruler every time. It just gives a general sense of how big the iris should be. If you hate math, this is something you can totally just eye without drawing any ruler lines or anything. Again, I'm drawing a full circle and it seems to fit perfectly inside the eye, so no erasing will be needed. And there we have our upturned eye, where the outer corner is higher than the inner one. Okay, let's turn the construction layer on again and move on to the hooded eye, my favorite. If you remember the first eye, we drew a deep U shape for the inner corner, something like this. This time, let's draw a droopy one. I'm just gonna tilt the U so it points in a downward direction. Draw the same deep U shape, but tilt it so it points down. For this eye, let's draw a more unique eyelid shape something similar to a trapezoid, which looks like this. Except we're gonna round off the corners. Now when you start the first stroke, you can either create a steep curve or a gradual one. I'm going for a steep curve. Extend this stroke to the right and bend it up steeply as early as you can. I'm not going to go too high. You can go higher if you want, or lower up to your creative decision. At the very tip, let's curve our stroke to the right, and then we'll extend it all the way to the intersection. Right about here, I'm gonna curve my stroke down steeply, creating a trapezoid shape. Keep in mind that you can change the shape of the trapezoid in various ways by pushing or pulling the shape. If you want, you can draw that corner further to the right for an even steeper curve, like so. Try different trapezoid shapes or even merge it with a rectangle. There are just so many shapes to experiment with. For the bottom lid, let's extend the stroke in a natural upward manner, but slowly angle our strokes down, across, and then up to end the loop. Okay, now here's where the hooded part comes in. The crease is gonna be closer to the eyelid, much closer. My stroke starts quite a distance away from the top eyelid, but at the highest point, the gap becomes narrower and narrower. The skin can even hang over the eye. The end of the crease doesn't have to be as close. Again, the tail can be angled in any direction. 
This is my favorite type of eye to draw for a masculine face. I think it's very masculine in appearance because it seems to be common among those who have very prominent brow bones, a sign of high testosterone. Turn off the construction layer again. For a super hooded eye, you can push the crease line down further, so the skin appears as though it's hanging over the eyelid. Draw the boundary line at the inner corner of our eye, and then comes the iris. Something I'm going to do differently here is actually move the iris up, so it's kind of resting above the bottom eyelid. It helps to draw those ticks a little bit higher for this one. The circle's diameter is still the same, I'm just moving it up. Now if you want to draw the pupil and want to make sure it's in the right place, which is the very center of this circle, Create a vertical and horizontal line through the iris before erasing the parts that fall outside the eye. The intersection between the two lines is the center, where the pupil should be drawn. Alright, let me zoom out to 100% so you can have a look at everything. Turning the construction layer on so you can see what has been done. So far, we've drawn three different types of inner corners, a deep U-shape, a V-shape, and a droopy U-shape, which angles down. We also have different types of eyelid shapes. This one's got a gradual slope, and this one has a steep slope. As for the crease, this one follows the top eyelid shape almost exactly. This one, less so, and it also has slight wrinkles near the beginning and the end. And for the last one, the skin above the eye is pushing down, almost hanging over the eye. Now it's time to draw the monolid, where the eyelid crease is not visible, or is not fully visible. A common characteristic of Southeast Asian eyes. For this example, yes, we could give any of the previous eyes monolids by getting rid of the crease. But there are various things I want to show you that make the eye look distinctly Asian, aside from just leaving out the crease. Let's draw a very shallow V-shape that's closer to the circle than compared to the other ones that we've drawn previously. We're going to do one thing very different here. The top eyelid is going to extend past the intersection where the circle and straight line meet. Just draw a narrow or a wide eye depending on your preference but remember to extend your strokes through and past the intersection. And then the bottom lid is pretty straightforward. End your stroke at the intersection. So now we have this sort of tail at the end of her eye. Just gonna make the bottom lid a little more shapely by making the curve deeper. Turn off the construction layer and add the rest of the details. If you're stumped on where to draw the boundary line inside the eye, draw it close to where the circle cuts through. Again, once you find the diameter of the iris, you can move it anywhere you want. After you draw your eye, you can always tweak it to your liking. The tiniest change can actually convey a completely different emotion, but that topic is for another video. In general though, if the inner eye is squeezed together, it can appear angry.
whereas when it's made a little bit wider, the expression can become more neutral. Let me just revert back to the original. Here's an alternative to drawing a monolid. Erase the tail right here and draw the slightest hint of a crease near the end of the top eyelid. You can also make a tail right here, similar to what we did on the right side. It makes the skin look as though it's in tension, like there's a lot of effort required for this individual to keep their eyes open. Alright, let's turn the construction layer on again and move on to the downturned eye. It's opposite of the upturned eye. Instead of angling up, it's going to angle down. Draw any shape you want for the inner corner. The shallower your shape is, the closer it should be to the circle. I'm creating a very, very gradual slope here. You basically know the drill already, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce another tweak that you can make. This tweaking is important because all of these elements put together, arranged in your own unique way, creates a one-of-a-kind eye that is drawn from your imagination instead of having to refer to reference images. The shapes and angles, they're all unique to your imagination and design. Think about the position of the eyelid's highest point. You can push this point anywhere you want along the horizontal axis. I'm gonna push it over to the left. So now, the highest point is over on the left side. It changes the look completely. This can of course be done for the bottom eyelid as well. We're in the design phase right now, so it's okay to move things around and sketch over the same area multiple times until the eye looks just right. Allow yourself the freedom to experiment and make mistakes. Draw the crease just above the top eyelid and add wrinkles if you want. And draw the rest. I know you've got the hang of that already. Let me zoom out on the canvas once again, using a double finger double tap. For the last eye, instead of drawing a sharp corner at the end, like this, we're going to do something quite a bit different. Turn the construction layer's visibility on. To make this eye round at the end, let's hug the edge of the circle as much as we can. It's much easier to draw all these different angles if you rotate your canvas. And I'm trying really hard not to because I don't want to make you guys dizzy, especially since all these clips are sped up. Okay, choose any shape you want for the inner corner. I'm drawing a downward pointing U shape. The special thing about this eye is we're going to bring our strokes all the way over here and hug the circle for a good distance before ending our stroke at the intersection. At the bottom, instead of drawing a shallow curve like we've been doing for most of the eyes, stretch it down to form a deeper curve. Again, the deepest point of our curve can be moved anywhere along the horizontal axis, except for the far left.
Here's a type of crease I haven't drawn yet. The gap between the eyelid is closer over here and wider at the tail. And then draw the rest of the eye. You'll notice that I'm not using the ruler method here because after drawing 5 of them already, I can roughly estimate the size in my head. So yeah, once you get the hang of it, you don't need to draw any construction lines or ruler lines at all. Everything on the construction layer can be visualized. Let's have a look at all 6 eyes. As you can see, they actually convey slightly different emotions. This one looks very alert because the eye is so open. The iris is fully visible, which can convey alertness, excitement, shock, horror, etc. An eye that shows much less of its iris can come across as sleepy. When about one quarter of the iris is hidden, we get a neutral expression, like what we see here. Eyes that mostly slope downward at the outer end can come across as sad. The hooded eye doesn't look as sad as the downturned eye but I can quickly change that by simply pushing the end of the top eyelid down even more. Here's what the eye looked like before and after. You can see that the eye looks even more sad now. Oh, and also, remember that the crease doesn't need to follow the exact shape of the top eyelid. For example, the almond eye has a gradual slope right here, but we can make a crease that has a steep slope instead. You can treat this entire process of drawing eyes as a Lego playing session. Pick and choose the elements you want to add or remove. There are so many combinations and pieces that you can customize. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that and took something away from this video. Don't forget to visit my detailed tutorial on drawing and shading hyper-realistic eyes in pencil. Links in the description. And if you like what I do here on YouTube and want to support my channel, please give that like button a click, share it with your friends, and subscribe so I can send more drawing tutorials your way. Thanks for watching.